Um, good evening, everyone. And welcome to tonight's meeting being held in the town council chambers. The date is Tuesday, October 10th, 2017. And I want to remind you that tonight's meeting is being recorded and please turn off your cell phones. Ellie, can you please do the roll call? Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Forrest? Mr. Hill? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mrs. Basil? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Morris? Present. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Justin Bianchi? Present. Okay. All present. Thank you, Ellie. And I would like from the Webb School, students Macy, Maya, Mallory, and Mackenzie Morey to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, Macy and Maya are in first grade, and Mallory's in the fourth grade, and Mackenzie's from the sixth grade at Webb. And thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Morey, for bringing them. Thank you. Well done. Um, I am making a motion to add an agenda item to this evening's agenda under action items, which is the approval of the minutes of the previous meetings, and that's the special board of ed meeting on October 3rd, 2017. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that's added to the agenda. Okay, Mr. Emmett, I understand we have very special student recognition tonight. Uh, we do, and I'm actually very pleased that we have a large uh, number of high school students with us this evening. Uh, I'd like to uh, show a uh, Blue Eagle news clip regarding something that's taken place recently at the uh, Weathersfield High School. So. <clears throat> In the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, Weathersfield High School had a two-day drive to help the victims in Puerto Rico. An ample supply of water, diapers, batteries, food, and toiletries were collected and were picked up by Hartford San Juan Center yesterday morning. The San Juan Center is one of several Latino organizations in Connecticut that have banded together to form the Puerto Rico Hurricane Relief Network. And the vision of this agency is to assist our Latino community. So being part of the San Juan Center Inc. is a way of helping out our own, you know, our own people, our own community. When there's people in need, you gotta help them out because one day, if you're ever in need, you are a little piece like you have someone who wants to help you out. If something were ever to happen to my family, I would want others to help out to my family, so it makes me feel good to help someone else out. As you can see from, from behind us, we have so many donations from so many people from so many walks of life that it, it really is, uh, I think, heartwarming to see the caring and, again, the generosity of our community. And, you know, we're, we're able to thankfully collaborate with the San Juan Center. They are wonderful, and they're going to get the items to the people who need them. Awesome job, WHS. Thanks for coming together to help those in need. This is Maria DiMattia from Blue Eagle News.
So it gives you an idea of uh, our student body and what we do and what we're all about at Weathersfield High School. Um, there is another clip up online. Uh, Justin, I don't know if you'd like to speak to your efforts in terms of getting that kicked off. You also, I believe, were on Blue Eagle News. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, we did a, we did a, the two-day drive. Um, Miss Coco and I and a few other students um, scrambled together to come up with the initial video, which was informing the school and informing the community about the drive, um, which you can see was very successful. Um, it's pretty much it. I mean, we did a lot, and the school was very successful in helping with the donations and such. Excellent. Thank you. And I, again, I, I can't say enough for our student body and our staff in terms of what they did to reach out and um, help those in need. So uh, to our high school students and high school faculty, uh, congratulations and thank you. And on behalf of the board, thank you. To everybody at Weathersfield High School, teachers and students, thank you. If I say you know, th there's two things that I took away from that, and I saw that online when it got sent to us last week, and it's not only a, a wonderful gesture on the part of our student body and our, our staff in our town. <laughs> when you look at that video, that's a professionally done piece of production. <laughs> that, that is our taxpayer investment into student technology paying off in spades. Those are job skills. Those are life skills. That, that is just wonderful to see us using the resources in such a wonderful way. I, I, I was blown away. Yeah. Any other comments? Janet? So um, as many of you know, this has hit me personally at home, um, having family still on the island and having family that have um, tried to get off the island on numerous occasions prior to Irma, after Irma, after Maria. And I did share the video with my family in Puerto Rico. And, the emotion and the heartfelt that they received was just, you know, they said, even if we never get one of those bottles, the fact that these kids who don't know us are helping 78 towns, if you think about 78 towns in need of just the basic necessities that we all take for granted. The video was beautiful. Like Mr. Morris said, everybody was just blown away at how nice it and well done it was. And the fact that the school did so much in a short amount of time. Um, I know I, I, I had contacted um, Mr. Emmett about the flyer and he sent it over to me and I forwarded it to everyone in my family. And it's just such a wonderful feeling to be part of a community that gives to no one, to, that gives to people they don't even know. So thank you, WHS, and you know, thank the community, anyone that doesn't have a child at the school but came to the school to donate. It's really a heartfelt um, gratitude from my family in Puerto Rico and from us here in Weathersfield. Thank you, Janet. Anyone else? OK. That was great. Thank you. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on September 26, 2017. Are there any corrections? Go ahead, Elaine. Um, I have uh, some typo corrections. On page three, Ellie, under Board of Education meetings held, it says School Project Building Committee. Mr. Emmett reported town council. I think we mean reported to the town council during its September 18th. No, that's right. Yeah. There's a word dropped. Oh, I see. Don't, oh, what do you right. mean this? Uh, yeah, I think there's Mr. Emmett reported town council. Don't you want the word to? No, that sentence is right. That sentence is right. Mr. Emmett reported town council during its September 18th. Yeah. Yeah. Tabled the voting. He's Tabled. got he's yes. correct. <laughs> Tabled's not capitalized. Yeah. yeah, I said that. Okay, but that's all right. Oh, oh, I see. They're the subject. Okay, town council's the subject. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tabled the voting pertaining to the district seeking, see if this is right, of an approval allowing the district to purchase. Okay, the, does the of belong in there? I, I think the of should come out during to purchase the last batch of technology. What do you think? I thought the grammar was a little off. So the of should come out, I think. 
Okay. Yep. That's the only ones I found for typing. Okay. Anyone else? Any corrections? <clears throat> okay. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. And continuing, and you just got the hard copy, we are looking for the approval of the minutes of the Special Board of Ed meeting on October 3rd, 2017. Are there any corrections? Okay. May I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. The, okay. Those minutes are approved. Janet seconded. I have to abstain too. Thank you. All set? Okay. All right. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we do have a five minute limit. Okay. Um, Mr. Emmett, communication to share? Yes, absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Uh, I am sure that you're all aware uh, that the state continues on, uh, I think this is day number 102, with no budget. Uh, there was some movement today, it appears. Uh, the governor is really pushing uh, to try and get things wrapped up by Friday. Um, as has been the case throughout the course of the fall, we continue um, th to be solvent. We continue to make sure that everything is in place. Um, we do continue with our budget freeze. Um, the only positions that we are replacing are those that are directly in classrooms. Um, and at this point in time, we feel that we're doing all right financially. Um, with that being said, we continue to monitor closely um, our expenditures and we are waiting for the state uh, to come forward with a budget so that hopefully we can put all of this uh, to bed and be able to move on. Um, I think the other thing to you know be aware of here is the fact that uh, from the 21st of August, we've really tried um, hard to limit our expenses and be very careful with um, how we're spending the allocated budget. Um, we know that the impact on the town in addition to the Board of Ed has the potential of being extraordinary. So we certainly want to do our part to make sure that um, we're, we're minding our financial house. A um, couple of other items for you. Uh, council at its most recent meeting approved the roof replacement for the Stillman building. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting last Friday to discuss the planning process for this. Staging will begin in about two weeks. Um, there will be limited access to the building and we anticipate temporarily losing 13 parking spaces during this time. That entire front row of parking is going to end up uh, being a drop area for materials. Um, the roofing contractor estimates about one month of work days to strip um, the existing slate, replace the decking, uh, put down a waterproof membrane and lay new slate. They'll also be repairing gutters and they'll be painting soffits. Um, we will look to relocate uh, committee meetings from Stillman during this construction time to minimize impact on parking. In addition to that, we'll typically have our reading specialists and our curriculum specialists come in and do work uh, at Stillman. We will relocate them out into uh, buildings as well during this time. Um, in addition, all of my friends at Hanmer, I'm asking that parents who typically um, drop off and pick up <laughs> uh, students in the Stillman lot, please refrain from doing so. Um, we'll have a school messenger message out. We're, we're just concerned about the issue of safety. There's a tremendous amount of traffic that goes through that parking lot, both in the morning and uh, as well in the afternoon around 310. The uh, hours for work will be approximately 730 to 4, so that would definitely overlap. Um, so we'll have a school messenger out specifically to the Hanmer parents with regard to that. Um, Again, we are hopeful that this project gets wrapped up um, by the end of December, all told. Uh, we know that weather may be a factor as well, but uh, they're going to do their best to get this done. The contractor is Silktown Roofing. They're the same contractor that did the high school. So uh, again, thus far, they've been very responsive. Mike, is that 
did you mention at one time it was not going to be real slate? Is it some kind of composite? Yes, exactly correct. At one point in time, yes. So here's the what's what's ultimately ended up happening. There was a lot of uh, discussion around using a simulated slate. And it turned out price-wise that it was essentially a wash to go with natural slate. Oh. So we will be utilizing natural slate. Okay. Um, we actually, they asked for a sample. So Fred climbed into the bushes in front of the building where we've had other slate fall and was able to get a pretty sizable piece so that they can match the color. Um, again, this process needs to happen. We have a hole in the roof and we currently have a tent up in the attic that collects the rainwater and funnels it down to a, a, a garbage can that's on the uh, second floor. So um, it's definitely time that this uh, project gets done. And talking with the town manager on Friday, um, he did report that they would be utilizing some of the 1% reserve funds. However, they would maintain approximately $60,000 within the 1% reserve fund, which certainly is helpful for us in terms of having uh, money available should we have a major capital um, issue over the course of the year. Um, I'm proud to report that the last uh, carpeted classroom at Emerson Williams is no more. Um, over the course of the Columbus Day weekend, the one classroom that was missed, um, the staff went in, completely dismantled the classroom, pulled everything out, they pulled up the carpet, and over the course of the weekend, the contractor came in and laid tile. So uh, Emerson Williams classrooms uh, no longer have the carpet, so we expect it to be much better in terms of cleanliness, easier for cleaning, certainly brighter those of you that have been over there have seen in the hallways they marked a difference um, we're having an issue uh, so the public is aware we're having an issue with the product used to coat uh, the gym floor in several of our buildings um, i was over at silas dean last week and this has been a vexing problem and it almost has the appearance of saran wrap being on the floor and this product is peeling up it's product we've used before um, but for some reason, it seems to be a bad lot. So uh, last Friday and over the course of the weekend, the company was out uh, stripping the floor and sanding the floor at Silas Dean. Um, so we'll be looking for them. That's going to be at their cost um, to uh, lay down some new uh, material, and hopefully it, it works. We've never had this issue happen before. It's happened at Silas Dean, and um, Fred noted that there are a couple of elementary schools where we're seeing it as well. So. Um, that's something that Fred is on uh, target with with regard to uh, the contractor at this point. Or actually not the contractor, but rather the vendor. And Mike, is the Emerson Williams floor working out? Uh, from what I hear at this point in time, the Emerson Williams floor is perfect. No we had uh, the Zumba event there a couple weeks ago and it was perfect. Okay, thank perfect. you. Problems. Yes. Yeah, and that uh, Emerson Williams floor, Elaine, that's a good question. Emerson Williams floor is a rubber floor, so it would not get this coating on it. So. Uh, just to let everybody know, anybody in here in 11th grade? Any juniors in here today? All right, who's taking the PSAT tomorrow? You are, that's right. The <laughs> just thought I'd remind you. Yeah, yeah the PSAT uh, administration will take place tomorrow at WHS, uh, so the schedule's in place. Best of luck, and again, this is an opportunity for you to get a little practice in before the real deal later on in the spring. Um, and then finally tonight, I'd like to thank uh, Miss Eastwood's kindergarten class at Hanmer for letting me come in and read last Friday. Uh, the students were highly engaged and they were up to the task of answering any questions I asked. Um, I will be continuing my tour of kindergarten classrooms throughout the month, uh, including my next stop at Charles Wright later on this week. And with that, uh, communications. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue on and under action items tonight, Diane, would you please read motion 6A for us? Okay, let me find it. Move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve the international school field trip request for Paris, France, and Barcelona, Spain during the April recess 2019, April 5th through 12th, 2019. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yes, I'd like to know. Yes, I actually. Mr. Nicholas, could you come up? Oh, I think I teach juniors. Uh, hi, good evening. Um, I am proposing uh, another trip to Europe this year. Um, and I know last year I promised you a video of last year's trip. And I, I loaned it to someone, and I haven't gotten it back yet. But <laughs> I will come back, I promise. Um, and when we were in Paris last year for a couple of days, 
uh, the kids were really excited about it, and they said, oh, we wish, they wish they were there longer. So that's one of the reasons why I chose to go back to Paris. Um, I'm going to double up the time, so I'll go for four days there and, and then uh, four more days in Barcelona as well. And I am keeping an eye on current events in Spain right now uh, with uh, some political unrest. But um, between a year and a half from now and also EF always has an alternative itinerary as a backup. I'm pretty confident that things will go well with uh, any situation that might present itself. Um, but if anybody has any specific questions about the itinerary or pricing or uh, insurance or anything really, I'd be happy to. Are the children paying this full fare? Yes, it is fully paid by students or, or their parents or family. Um, the current price right now is $3,100. Mm -hmm. That's why I like to come so early mm -hmm. um, because it gives students about a year and a half to pay it down. So right now that's about $167 a month which is a little easier to chew off uh, over time than if you wait wait six months more. And you guys got a lot of chores higher. to do around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Get to raise 167 a month. Well, babysitters make okay. a lot more now than when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, just a question, you said there's an alternate tour if they... Uh, typically, EF, we, we choose an alternate route. Um, and that can happen, you know, they can change the itinerary months in advance or even days in advance, or even if we were over there and something were to happen. Uh, EF Tours is a huge company. They have facilities, hotel agreements everywhere in Europe, um, Asia, you name it, Australia, um, just about every continent except Antarctica probably. <laughs> um, and so they can get whisk us out in a moment's notice and keep us from harm. Okay. And also, would they get a um, reimbursement if it was really canceled? Yes. Is that, yeah. That's part of an insurance setup? Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Okay, oh, go this way. Diane. I, I would wholeheartedly support this motion. Um, both my daughters have been on trips with Mr. Nick. Um, Allison went last year to Paris and London, and it was just such a fantastic experience for the kids. Um, and the cost is relatively um, affordable. Especially so what we get, it's a, it's a great, and that actually includes a couple of extras that I threw in, um, sort of side, one is a visit to Versailles, a day trip out to Versailles, mm -hmm. and another one is um, we're going to go shopping in a Spanish market, um, buy our own groceries, and then go get a cooking lesson. So I thought that would be a fun experience for students to do. So that, and that is included in that full price. And, and EFT, um, just to speak to safety concerns, um, a, it was a week before our kids left, there was a terrorist attack in London. In London, on yes. On the London Bridge. Um, and EFT was very good about communicating directly with all the parents mm -hmm. and all the kids. Right. Good. Yep. About how they were monitoring it and, all, and give, giving us number all this stuff once they left to keep in contact and stuff. So. Yeah. And that was really interesting, too, because the kids actually saw... I mean, there was a crane blocking the bridge. There were still f literally flower piles of flowers there. Um, so, you know, besides the, the history we think of that they're learning, um, you know, just the really the current events was really amazing. Okay, anybody else? Janet? Are you going to make the students speak French or Spanish? Well, that's one of the emphasis. We hope to emphasize speaking the language as well. Yeah, when we were in Paris last year, we were encouraged kids to order from waiters or, you know, wait staff. Um, or street vendors, wherever they can use the language, absolutely. Right. Uh, so it really covers la world languages, history. Um, my understanding, I've never been to Barcelona, but I understand it's a, a haven for artists. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful city for creativity and art and music. Yeah. Okay, Polly? Uh, just, uh, just a quick question. So uh, this tour company then um, is, is one that you've used in the past, you use on a regular basis? Yes, I've used EF about five or six times. Okay. I've also chaperoned with another teacher, Mr. Sand, who has used EF okay. probably five or six times as well. Okay. Yeah, they're very reputable. Uh, it stands for Education First, EF oh, Tours. Um, yeah. John? I'm, like Diane, I'm also very happy to support this. Um, these, these are great trips. It's, it's hard 
to to overstate how wonderful they are. Um, my senior partner, who uh, had a place in Paris, always said that my education wasn't complete until I went to Europe. And I thought <laughs> well, adults can go baloney. too, you know. <laughs> yeah. I always thought he was full of baloney until he finally convinced me to go, and he was right. You get a very different view of the world from another place. It is really mm -hmm. a, remarkable. Paris is so completely different from anything here and so completely familiar when you're walking around at the same time. It, it, right. It's a head fake. It's the coolest place. So <laughs> I'm thrilled that the kids are going. It doesn't cost our taxpayers any money. It's a home run all around. It yeah. is. It is. And, and also, just to add to that, I think the kids learn so much about themselves. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The guides are fabulous. They, they make the students navigate the subways. Obviously, they're there to, we're there to help them out, too. But yeah. you know, we'll stop at a, a map and say, OK, how are we getting there? Maybe uh, go to so a I think they just and get some baguette. Yes, and absolutely. Never forget it. <laughs> you can't get a baguette like that here at all. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Um, I guess there's no more discussion. We could probably go on for a long time. Okay. Let's. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That motion passes. Thank That's you very fabulous. much. That's fabulous. And again, you have the brochure, and it's open to adults. Yep. So. Yeah. Oh, Come on. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. Have a great night. Merci. Thank you, girl. Thank you. All right. At tonight's meeting, we do have a report on the annual class size. Mr. Emmett? Yes. Thank you. Hey, good evening, everyone. I just uh, wanted to share with you this evening the uh, annual uh, elementary and secondary class size report for 2017-2018. Uh, uh, this is a document that we uh, create every year uh, right beyond uh, October 1st when we submit our data to the state, the uh, public school information system. certainly want to bring your attention right to the uh, total enrollment numbers in the top uh, box. You'll notice uh, the comparison, direct comparison of uh, enrollment count here in the Wethersfield Public Schools from uh, October 1st, 2016 to October 1st, 2017. So what you see here overall is a net reduction of uh, a total of 11 students. So it's a pretty stable um, district at this point in time. And you'll notice here in terms of the early intervention in pre-K, we're seeing a, a slight decrease there. Um, we expect typically that those numbers go up during the course of the school year as we have more students come in through birth to three. Um, those numbers generally will get up into the 70 to 75 range over the course of the uh, year. Uh, you'll notice that we've actually seen a slight increase in the number of elementary students. Uh, just a few fewer at the middle school, and our largest decrease um, is at uh, Wethersfield High School. This is the uh, elementary school class size chart. Um, this is a chart that should be familiar to you all. Uh, you got this chart essentially every week since June as we monitored uh, class sizes. So as of October 1st, you can see the number of sections that we have in place. And it's interesting when you look at the enrollment. We have these bubbles that come up every uh, couple of years. Two years ago, we had the bubble at Charles Wright. Uh, this year, we had a large number of students uh, enroll over at Highcrest. So you see the numbers at Highcrest are somewhat larger. This is an interesting table, specifically uh, table number two. When you look at, at the elementary level, the number of classes that we have uh, at 26 or greater. We currently have zero. The other piece that's interesting, the number of uh, classes that we have in district that have 15 or fewer students, 
we're up to eight. We went from zero to eight. And I think that that's a testament to your uh, leadership with regard to your commitment to low class sizes here in Wethersfield. The other piece that's interesting in table three, we have the elementary uh, class size by grade and by school. Um, so you can see where each school is. Um, generally speaking, the numbers are pretty consistent. And then we get into middle school at Silas Dean. Silas Dean typically has a few sections, uh, math and language uh, arts, and certainly world language tend to be areas where we see larger uh, sections of kids. You can see uh, Spanish, for example, with the electives. Uh, our Spanish numbers are, are quite large. Um, it would be nice to have an additional Spanish teacher there. It's one thing that we've talked about in the past. But overall, when you look at the sizes, they are manageable. And here are the numbers for eighth grade. Again, our world language numbers are um, quite high. One of the things that happens at the middle and the high school level, let's take a look, if you would please, at uh, the French. We have two sections of French. Typically, what we do at the elementary level is we try and balance the classes out. It gets a little more challenging at the secondary level in middle and high school because of the fact that kids have unique schedules. So we can't always make the schedule fit. So what would be nice would be if you could take that section of 24 and reduce it down to 15. Not always um, able to do that. And again, you'll see over the course of time, this is a history over the past 10 years. So 10 years ago, we, our average class size at Silas Dean was 20.63. Currently, it's down to 19.15. So we've really been pretty consistent would say that our numbers really ballooned in uh, the 2011-2012 school year where we were up at almost 23 and a half kids per class. And again, you can see even here, this is the first year uh, in a while where we do not have classes of 30 or, or more at Silas Dean. Moving on to Weathersfield High School, you can see the class sizes by department. Some of these classes are, um, for example, the reading lab may serve as students that have special needs, which is why you see lower numbers. Here's math and science. Class size is driven by schedule? Yes. You can see, like, if you look, um, Diane, at Algebra 1 uh, uh, dash 2, you've got a class size of, it ranges from 26 uh, down to two sections of 11. Mike, what's a, a statistics 1 and 2? What's that mean? Level 1 and 2 mixed together? Yes. And one of those classes has 28 in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the things that you'll notice too uh, with like the biology numbers, uh, I, I like to see the biology numbers a little bit lower. Obviously that's one of those core science courses that the kids really need. So those numbers are, are definitely manageable. I'd like to see those pre-calculus numbers if we got any money down too. Mm -hmm. Those are 29, 29, and 29, and 27, mm -hmm. and that's not easy. No. That, I mean, what the material isn't either. True. <laughs> Here's social studies. Again, AP psychology, you'll notice we have five sections, and uh, very, very well subscribed. And here's our world language. And again, this is typical in world language. You'll really have a lot of students in, say, Spanish 1 and 2. And then your numbers, as you get down to the uh, higher levels, specifically in French and Italian, the numbers will decrease. Um, also important to note that we did have a, uh, a change in world language at the high school this year with a new teacher. So we've just hired a new teacher, replacing one that resigned. Mike, can you go yes. back to that slide for a second, please? I, ha I highlighted that 
Spanish AP class. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have prerequisites for getting in an AP class, do we? Uh, well, typically speaking, if you're going to have somebody go into an AP class in, in a world language, that student is going to have taken multiple years of Spanish. The other piece to remember, too, when you're getting into the AP level, you're talking about a lot of collaboration and a lot of work um, among the students. So you may find that the students at the AP level are doing a lot of project-based work, okay. very similar to like what we would do with the capstone. Okay. I, I just uh, I see that as a very large number for AP. But if they're all if they're all good students, I mean, I got the impression from Tom Moore that we don't have like you had to have in Spanish one a B or Spanish two a B to mm -hmm. get into the AP class because and you could just sign up and I don't know if that still exists or not and. Um, I was wondering if that made mm -hmm. that 30 rather large because mm -hmm. we don't have any prerequisites. Yeah, and it's interesting, Lane, when you look at eight, like AP French, uh, you look at that, the size is yeah. 11. So you can see the, in terms of students making the choice. Yep. Are, do we not have an ECE Spanish anymore? It, it doesn't show here. No ECE Spanish this year? Uh, no, we can run into staffing. Okay, staffing issue, Diane. Okay, here's business ed and family consumer science. Again, I like the food and nutrition numbers. Uh, that's a state-of-the-art commercial kitchen that they have access to. So we have manageable numbers. Is it personal and, and I also like these because these are things that the kids can take forward, you know, yes. into careers. Absolutely correct. Next, I think your next sheet, too, where it shows... Um, uh, architectural engineering and construction technology. Mm -hmm. We have good numbers in those too, Mike. Yes. And, and that's using the new school, what we've supplied in the new school, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> but those are robotics. Look at the numbers in there. So it's all good stuff. Video production. Absolutely. Was, didn't exist when my child was in Weathersfield High School, but that's what he does for a living. Well, so right. it's a great, great things we've put in this school at the cost we paid for it, but it's still great things because these are the 21st century skills kids are going to need, in well, my opinion. Right, and you. you saw that tonight, I mean, during staff student recognition. That was a very professionally done yes. piece yes. that was done in-house by our Blue Eagle production crew. And, and it's interesting, uh, with that piece, we sent that off to Channel 3. And I reached out to the Channel 3 reporter that covers Weathersfield and asked her to come out, and I'd love to see her do a story on Blue Eagle News. I mean, this is a perfect medium for, for students to be able to oh, talk absolutely. about what's going on. And again, you take the skills that you learn at the high school level and you take them on to, to you know, college and career. It's a win-win. Yeah, all those listed there are great for college and career, so. I think. And again here, you'll notice with, uh, again, technology education, we, we do see a pretty strong subscription across the board. And then phys ed, you know phys ed is a mandate. Here's art and music. And again, please don't be uh, alarmed by the numbers in concert choir of 94 and 93. Those numbers are supposed to be larger. May I share that Mr. Rio does a great job with them? Yes, no doubt about it. No doubt. So you see art and music. And again, some of our other uh, programs, we have uh, four students attending the uh, uh, Gamis Ga Half Day program where they spend part of their day with us and then part of their day uh, at the uh, Greater Hartford Academy of uh, Math and Science or the Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts. Our ELL program, we have 27 students that um, are currently participating in receiving ELL services. Our ALS program, that's our adaptive living skills program uh, housed at Weathersfield High School. We currently have 10. Our ADP program, that's the uh, alternate day program. Uh, kind of a self-contained program for students with special needs. Um, each individual student is mainstreamed within the high school to the extent that their IEP allows. Uh, and we have 16 in that class at this point in time. And again, here's the look uh, over the course of time with regard to 10 years. You see our numbers are really pretty consistent over the course of the past 10 years. 
and you look a couple years back, 15, 16 school year, we had 13 sections of 30 or more students. We're down to three. Okay, and then our transition academy, our current numbers at the transition academy um, are at 15. Um, we continue to have an out of district student that comes in that is paying tuition to attend uh, our program. So, um, you, um, go ahead, question? No, I was thinking of that as somebody we had a place out of district. No, that's somebody just that the that opposite. That's, that's just the opposite. And, you know, we continue to work on the marketing plan with regard to the Transition Academy where we're able to bring students in from other districts that don't have that type of programming. As you know, um, our students aged 18 to 21, uh, by law, the legal mandate is that if they require it within an individualized education plan, we are required by law to provide that service up until age 21, at which point in time we assist in the transition to adult services for that particular student. So we find this program to be very beneficial. Um, it is a community-based program. Uh, today, for example, I had uh, two of the students in working with us at Stillman. Uh, they work on mail. They have a lot of work to do there. They work on shredding. They have to deal with uh, the staff. They have to interact. They have to follow directions. They have to make sure that the mail is accurate. All skills that they would need in a, a job setting out in the community. So we're very happy to have them. Okay. So that's, that's the extent of the report at this point in time. Um, my plan at this juncture is to take this data and send this data onto NESDEC, the New England uh, Association for School Development. NESDEC did our um, enrollment projections, so we want to make sure that this information is passed on to them so that we get an up-to-date um, figure from NESDEC in terms of our enrollment projections down the, uh, in the future. So with that, any questions? I, think I, I do have a comment. Sure. I'd like to say last year when we had the numbers, um, Tom Moore um, and I sat down and he was nice enough to invite all the department heads in. And I asked him questions about, you know, 30 in a class and 28 in a class. Um, and that's the bad news is that they're that high and it's budgetary reasons. And we don't, we're not going to get another teacher for those sections. But the good news was there's no classroom management issues. The students are very well behaved. They're there um, trying to learn, and um, I was very pleased to hear that. Mm -hmm. Kevin. Um, just a couple of questions regarding um, the elementary. I think it's Highcrest with the, the 25 bubble yes. and the three courses. I mean, looking ahead to next year, I know this is kind of an annual concern. We look at, we look at it throughout the year, Yes. and you never know what the numbers are going to look like the first day of school. People they, they register the first day, second day. But how do we, first, are there any space constraints in terms of the high crest, in terms of like going into fifth grade next year? I mean, I, we can all, the assumption is the, the, the class size will at least remain the same, if not grow. First, do we have any space constraints? And if so, or if not, was there, is there an opportunity for us to, I know right now in terms of we're in a budget freeze, we can't really hire any more teachers, but do we have any plan moving forward to kind of address those concerns? I know. Uh, parents have come out already to kind of mm -hmm. um, talk about this. Yeah, a very, very good question. And the reality here is we absolutely have space constraints um, over at Highcrest. Um, that is a uh, 1970s vintage, uh, former or open classroom space. Um, so we definitely have limitations there in terms of being able to fit a full classroom. Um, we also have portables over there. Those portables have long outlived their usefulness. Um, they should have gone a long time ago. So that's something we're definitely going to have to take a look at. We'll talk with Fred as we go through the course of this year and as we start the planning process for next year and, and really look and see if we um, need to add additional sections. So what we may end up having to do is we may end up having to take a special education um, office and create a smaller classroom space. Uh, we may not be able to put, say, a sixth grade in there, but we may be able to put a kindergarten in there. But therein, it's like a domino effect. What we've tried to do over at Highcrest is, like when I first got here, we had kindergarten over in this pod, we had a little kindergarten over in this pod, and then we had one over in this pod. So what ends up happening is they're, they're not together. We've got them now where they're all together. So when you go into Highcrest, you can go to all three classrooms. It's nice. It's nice for collaboration. It's nice for the teachers to be able to collaborate. So. 
if we had to look at adding additional sections there, yeah, the, the reality is is that the um, the space constraints are definitely going to be an issue. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else with questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, so for our Board of Ed meetings held, um, Polly, the Finance and Information Management Committee, did we already give that report? Uh, yes, we did that um, last, last time. time. Thank and you. There are, I believe the minutes are, yep. have also been released. Minutes have been sent, yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and the other one on our agenda is the Special Board of Ed meeting, which was on October 3rd. John? This was a meeting we had regarding a student disciplinary matter, um, expulsion hearing. Um, so much of that is confidential <coughs> to protect the, the student. Um, it is very happy to report that the issue was one that the administration and the student and family were able to work out. So it was presented to us as an agreement as opposed to a contested matter. That was very good doing. Okay, thank you. Um, meeting schedule. We have a school projects building committee on 1010 uh, at 6.30. A special board of ed meeting, our retreat on um, October 17th at 5 o'clock. Crec Council on October 18th at 11.30. Uh, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, which is the WEC um, group, and they have their annual meeting on October 23rd at 5.30 p.m., and I believe it's over at the Community Center. And a Finance Committee meeting on October 24th at 6 o'clock. Okay. Is there any unfinished business? Well, I do have um, one comment on some unfinished business, but actually it kind of goes along with um, business that's come back. Um, the board and the administration will be reestablishing a committee on wellness, and this committee will focus on the well-being of all our students and is led by John Karzar, our director of special services. Originally, it was formed to address the following eight components to a coordinated approach to school health. It was school health and safety policies and environment, health education, physical education and other physical activity programs, nutrition services, school health services, school counseling, psych psychological and social services, and health promotion for staff also family and community involvement. The board's responsibility is that all children achieve in our schools, and for that to occur, a student must be emotionally present to learn. Consequently, the Wellness Committee will also be directing its energy toward the opioid epidemic, matters concerning gender, bullying, emotional issues, including suicide and anxiety, family and social problems, and other subjects as they may arise. The board's strongest desire is that we provide a school system that allows students to experience a joyful childhood and the peace of mind that enables them to learn as they grow. So our first meeting is Tuesday, October 17th. Okay. Who's on that committee? Um, so far, uh, John, we have a committee established, and everyone's saying yes. A wide variety of people, both can you come, board. John? Can you come up to, to the podium, please? Thank you. I know I'm on it. I, uh, what time is that meeting? I'll be on it. Okay. So, John, it, um, you have volunteers here. Oh, well, definitely. And I, <laughs> Diane, I saw you volunteered. It was that. Oh, okay, great. Uh, so we have a wide variety of people, both uh, school people and community people. Uh, Erica from Youth Services, uh, Jamie from um, Sedexco, Jamie from uh, the Food Carl. Services. Thank you, um, and a, a few other community people too. And we're still looking, um, you know, to start off, but then see who else we may need on the committee. Okay, and you can have Diane on it. Can you, um, can you reiterate again the date and time? Uh, so our first date is going to be October. 17th at 3.30 at Stillman Building. 
And then I think we're going to look at following uh, like, you know, once Tuesday a month, but I just want to check everyone's schedule once we got there the first time. Is that time that's going to be the same every Tuesday? Uh, yeah, we're looking at once a month, uh, probably on Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. John, that's also going to include uh, WPS staff as well? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And we're trying to get a representative from every school, Perfect. whether it's a, a teacher, social worker, a nurse. Perfect. Um, so a wide variety of departments and schools. Are there going to be kids on it? Uh, at this point, we do not have student representatives, but I would like to have student representatives, especially uh, at one point. I think I see another volunteer there. <laughs> um, at one point, we want to go over the race survey, too, and I think that would be good to go yes. over the race survey with student reps uh, there also. Mm -hmm. Elaine? I would like to be part of that committee, especially if maybe Diane couldn't make it at 3.30 some days. You know. I'll make it a point to make it. Okay. Great. <laughs> I have a vested interest in this. Okay. Absolutely. Great. 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 Thank, Thank you, you, John. Thank, Thank you, you for taking this on. No, no problem. Okay. Is there anyone, anyone else with a comment on that? All right. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium, state your name and address, and may I remind you that we have a five-minute limit. Okay. Are there any board comments? Elaine? Um, Mr. Ammon, I noted in the um, Friday update, your Friday um, synopsis piece, that yes. we've had only one family that seems to have entered because of the um, horrible uh, hurricane in Puerto Rico and then of course we had in the paper that you know the be prepared for yes. a number of families I was wondering if you could give us an update is there anything changed since that little paper? yeah no, nothing uh, changed at this point in time we had our first family enroll uh, last year um, we sent out uh, the guidance that we got from the state to all the administrators in addition to that let uh, Suzanne Curtin who assists with uh, info snap as well as Mike Goddard our residency officer uh, let them know of the um, guidelines and uh, you know we do expect that there will be more families that look to enroll here in Wethersfield um, and I know just in uh, seeing the news last night Hartford is another uh, district that is you know preparing for a, a large number of, of uh, refugees coming in so we are prepared and uh, we have the guidelines in place thank you okay anyone else for comments Polly uh, yes thank you um, I just wanted to um, uh, thank um, the Emerson Williams uh, PTO for um, a really fantastic uh, program that w they sponsored um, today um, that on um, cyber safety and uh, cyber security, which um, made me glad that my children have already grown. <laughs> have to worry about this but there are a, a lot of um, there's a lot of information that um, uh, the uh, gentleman who uh, presented the class was Scott Driscoll from Internet Safety Concepts which is a uh, consulting firm and he does a um, he does a number of I guess school presentations and also presentations uh, to parents about cybersecurity and uh, I just thought that was a uh, that was a terrific idea. Uh, it was at three o'clock, and, and um, I th there were an, quite a number of students or uh, t I'm sorry, parents there, which obviously can um, show that people have to move their schedules around a little bit and uh, deal with childcare and that kind of thing in order to attend. And uh, so I think it was very well received. So I um, I appreciate very much when. Uh, we see what the PTOs are doing for our uh, for our kids and for our parents, especially. So, thank you, Great. Diane. This type of program should be offered district wide in the evening for parents. It it's was last year. Last year, it was they did. It was was offered at Silasteen. Yeah, that's why we ended up bringing him back this year. We talked as an administrative team and thought that this was very powerful. And you know, one of the things we did today not only was it parents, but it was staff. Yes. to make sure our staff members are aware of what to look for and um, it's amazing how fast the um, social media frenzy has gotten in terms of the various types of applications uh, what we think uh, is it, we put it out there and we think it disappears no it doesn't 
Um, and again, when we hide behind the computer, we hide behind the phone, uh, the words can be just as hurtful. And you know, we need to make it a point to make sure that our students are educated. There's also the, the predatory nature of social media now. And that's something that we need to make sure our kids are educated about. Um, in dealing with sexting issues. I mean, we've dealt with sexting issues all the way down to the elementary level. And that's something that, you know, we need to make sure that we let parents know, we make parents aware, and we inform parents. So um, we did do it last year. We will certainly do it again. Uh, again, I think in terms of Emerson Williams, they took the lead from Silas Dean last year mm -hmm. and had Scott come out. I think Scott has done excellent work. He's, you know, no nonsense and lays it out straight. And I think that we had a lot of parents leave today going, oh my goodness, I need to take stock in what my child is doing what they're looking at and you know what access they have is, is there something that we can put that we can develop and, and put on our website the the Wethersfield schools website and maybe the individual websites that the, the, the various schools have mm -hmm. so parents have a resource to look at mm -hmm. and maybe through school messenger direct them mm -hmm. to it yep. like I'm just looking over at Polly's shoulder and there's a lot of facts and stuff like that that because a lot of parents probably couldn't come to a three o'clock thing, but they have yeah. those resources mm -hmm. available with some links and stuff. Yep. Uh, Janet. Just, oh, I'm sorry. So, do we offer support to the children that are getting these inappropriate texts by having their peers support them as well? Because sometimes the peers are actually making it worse. Mm -hmm. So they also need to be educated on these actions they should be supporting that um, adding to the situation and adding it making it more stressful the mm -hmm. the amount of time that we spend at the high school dealing with um, social media based issues is quite amazing and a lot of times what will happen is something will spread over the course of social media and then it comes into school and it has a significant and profound impact on the function at school um, we do a lot with regard to mediation. We do a lot in terms of support from our SRO, Eric Knapp. We have our guidance counselors and our social workers involved as well. Um, it's, again, social media is an extraordinarily difficult thing to monitor and to control when it's happening outside. Um, I don't think we minimize it. I think that we work hard to try and address it. And, um, you know, make sure that kids are respectful and make sure that kids are making good choices. Again, we also ask our parents to monitor what's going on. Make sure that you know what your kids are accessing. Who's paying for those phones? Most often, I know I, I'm still paying for my kids' phones. <laughs> but, you know, there has to be some level of accountability, and it's really all on all aspects and all facets. Thank you. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I hey, just Polly? follow up a little mm -hmm. bit on that? Um, there were uh, also two things that I thought were very interesting. First of all, once again, the um, uh, it, uh, Mr. Driscoll gave us a lot of information, which was wonderful, but he also then uh, ended his um, presentation with a um, with an actual uh, case that. Uh, uh, that had, he had been working on and of a student who made a very um, poor choice as far as um, a picture that uh, she just shared with a boyfriend and then they broke up and then it all of a sudden went out on social media. And it was, I think, six years later that it came up again and um, because she had applied for a scholarship and um, what happens, as um, we may or all may or may not know, is the fact that uh, very often when uh, someone applies to college or uh, for jobs or whatever, that um, uh, usually these institutions look for or do a Google search. And at six years later, this picture came up. And um, by that time, it had actually mo um, been circulated throughout the world yeah. and it was just a phenomenal and this uh, basically uh, this one mistake that she made did not uh, go away. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is that there were two new statutes that were passed this year um, which I think that at some point um, would be and it was just 
they're only effective October 1st, which you may or may not be aware of, but that I think would be a good idea to, for us to, um, to raise the awareness on that, and that has to do with uh, possession of child pornography and the fact that it is now a, there, the, um, not only does the law cover the sending of these types of images, but also the receipt of them. So if, um, a, you know, if a, if a kid receives a picture or someone and uh, opens it, they, it, they could be in, uh, uh, it, the law has expanded to, um, uh, uh, to address people who even receive them. So it, um, there were kind of some interesting and, in, you know, in addition to the, the concerns that we have for kids, but of also getting the point across to parents and adults, um, the seriousness. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, Polly. Anyone else? <clears throat> All right, well, before we close tonight, I would like to correct what I believe are misunderstandings of the Board of Ed's responsibilities as well as its philosophy in two very critical areas of our education system. First, recently in these chambers, the town was criticized for extending and enhancing educational opportunities to those students who are intellectually or physically challenged. Essentially, the criticism was directed at our special ed program. As you all know, this is a federal requirement directed by the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights, that every public school system ensures that all students are served equitably, that all are given the opportunity to achieve at the highest levels in a welcoming and supportive environment. That is the legal basis of our investment in the town's special education program. But not for a moment am I gonna hide behind the rationale for our special ed program being a federal requirement. Because let me make it clear, this board is unified in its support of providing equal educational opportunities to all students, not only because it is law, but because we believe inclusion is the right thing to do. We are providing every student, no matter their intellectual or their physical stature, the opportunity to achieve at their highest level is the responsibility of every educator, every parent, and every taxpayer. This philosophy must not only be the moral inclination of our town, it must be our creed. I will hopefully end this discussion by borrowing a quote from Eunice Kennedy Shriver, who said, when we give others the chance to fulfill their greatest potential, we all win. And there's an other, another issue that has been raised numerous times before the town council and the board of ed, and it's the matter of investment in our athletic programs, or should I say the supposed lack of return on investment on school sports. Essentially, we are being criticized for not making it a priority to generate revenues from our athletic programs. Well, I believe it is fair to say that our athletic programs actually generate enormous return on investment. I know our student athletes will agree with me when I argue that our athletic programs build character and respect, teach good sportsmanship, teach how to work with others, the value of having a competitive edge, as well athletics help students who participate to learn to manage anxiety and stress, boost friendships and relationships, and gain appreciation for one another. Sports builds healthy bodies and minds, cultivates leadership skills, wisdom, courage, and honor. And there is nothing like a winning season in any sport to rally the town's pride in our students and in our schools. No, we don't generate revenue from our athletic programs, but I believe the return on our investment is ultimately immeasurable. And from this board's perspective, it is priceless. Thank you. And we'll, we'll move on well to- Well said. 
Thank you. Justin, any comments on life at the high school? Well, first of all, I agree with everything you said 100%. Very well said. Thank you. Um, the talent show benefiting the hurricane victims is Thursday night at 7 o'clock in the auditorium, the high school auditorium. Um, tomorrow, the juniors are taking the PSATs. Powder Puff and Homecoming are being scheduled for November. The college process is in full swing for seniors, and school counseling is continuing to host college visits. Marching band came in first place at the Rocky Hill competition. Um, and in terms of class sizes, which was um, mentioned before, I don't think I'm in the larger classes and I don't think that my ability to learn is being restricted. I think that it's a good learning environment when you have a lot of students who have a lot of different opinions and share a lot of different values. I think I like oh, good. it. Good, thank you. Good, good to hear. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Okay, so any more comments? All right, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming and thank you for watching. Good night.